Hello composite cell organisms. This video is strange since it's a critique of someone else's stuff, which is rare nowadays for my channel, and this time I'm reviewing evolution animations, because they're kind of a gateway for people to be introduced to evolution. First I want to note that if this video gets copyrighted then that's okay, however to prevent this video from getting taken down for charges of pirating others' works, I will remove the original audio. First critique of pretty much every evolution animation under the sun, evolution is not a deterministic process and living species were not a predetermined outcome of natural selection. This is technically the pot calling the kettle black since my own intro you just saw was like that, but at least we can now dive headfirst into the real problems with these three videos I'm reviewing today, starting chronologically in order with this animation made by Waldo de los Rios and probably Shuleta Graben, which is where I got this footage from. Okay, some nice embryonic intermission, and now they're all zygotes again. Okay then, inaccuracy number one. The first cells did not possess nuclei. Instead, the DNA was freely copied and stored in the cytoplasm with splitting using binary fission instead of the complex mitosis stuff. A very important sidetrack about the animations that I'm reviewing is that they constantly use living organisms as the ancestors of other living ones, despite that not making much sense at closer inspection, so I'll only mention it if it especially stands out. Fast forwarding, you can see that the snail becomes a vertebrate. Not only is it nonsensical, it also doesn't make that much sense since the theme seems to be that deuterostomes are on the bottom and protostomes are on the top, and snails are protostomes, meaning them turning into vertebrates is both inaccurate and fictionally inconsistent. After that, an antennae forms a new organism, which is something that no animal can do, not even the hyper-regenerating ones, and this rough part is off. This part is possibly my favorite, but it's weird to see it briefly turn into an ant despite ants being descended from flying insects and their reproductive castes still having wings. Afterwards, a jelly band of reptiles set off. One grows a long neck to reach fish, despite the long necks and plesiosaurs evolving after aquatic adaptations in real life. Then is a sequence of events that's better understood in my usual panel-based art. What happens in the short film is that one becomes a dimetrodon, another becomes a pterosaur, and the third one becomes a basic reptile. The Dimetrodon turns into a Tyrannosaurus, the Pterosaur becomes a bird, and the basic reptile finally becomes a mammal. What should have happened is that the Pterosaur should have remained a Pterosaur since they were never the ancestors of birds, the Dimetrodon should have been the one to turn into the mammal, and a fresh new generic dinosaur should have split into the bird and the Tyrannosaur. Next in line is a PG-rated sex scene where a flower self-fertilizes itself and a sperm fuses with an egg, followed by the coming to being of modern mammal groups in one of the most nonsensical, borderline Dr. Seussium type events I've ever seen. Then again, the problem was mostly with the ungulate turning from an aquid to a giraffe and then into a proboscidean. The transition is shown for the whale, the human, and the tiger are better. And that's pretty much it. There are some more subtle things that I can mention, such as plant evolution hidden sneakily in the background and the weird skeleton and posture of the Tyrannosaur, but that's my synopsis of what's wrong with this animation. Next video is by none other than Fatboy Slim in 2009-ish, and although the main centerpiece of the video is the music, this will probably be the video most likely to be copyrighted, so I'll not just skip on the audio, but also flip the video itself. Okay, the first glaring flaw is obvious. The time scale presented in the corner is so extremely zoomed out that it almost has a mystical alien feel to it. Like I'm trying to crack the 8 billion year natural history of Snyad or something. Anyways, so a ball of cytoplasm formed quote unquote 350 billion years ago begins to turn into a jellyfish faster than you can mention that unicellular life took up nearly three quarters of Earth's history. Then it transforms into a worm thing, into a pipefish, and then into a despined pufferfish. Note that all these animals and the jellyfish might as well have been replaced with custom filler creatures like they did with the rest of the animation. Forming 200-ish billion years ago is what I like to call the rodeo fish. I call it that because its animation looks like it's on one of those bull rides at a theme park. Then this fish gets stuck on land, with there being multiple problems. 
The reduction in the number of fins and the fins themselves becoming more leg-like predated the first time tetrapod ancestors crawled onto land. Second, land by the time tetrapods came to it was already green and covered by plants and the earliest trees. And third, mantises and tyrannosaurs that we can see as contemporary creatures both originated in the Cretaceous and not the Devonian when the scene should have taken place. It's especially bad for the tyrannosaurs since tyrannosaurs were descended from these fishy forerunners. Next, this amphibian becomes the main character of an infinite runner game and becomes a poorly articulated baby crocodile for some reason. Next, it climbs up a tree, sneakily though half-acidly avoiding the animation needed to drive the transition between reptiles and mammals, and mammals to apes, and so begins this. Hey, what is that music saying? I'm Monkey Man a Hug Monk? What? Okay, then this ape jumps in a choppy manner onto this snow cliff and becomes a great ape? when it choppily jumps off the cliff into a Badlands-type environment. Not only does this in no way look like a suitable habitat for this thing, but it also just seems to be a shoehorned in reference to 2001 A Space Odyssey. Lastly, the fur gets shed, and not all suddenly we are introduced into a city. That's pretty much it besides slowly watching the BMI and eyesight of humanity worsen. Moving to the final entry, a flashy animation made in 2018 by Tech Insider of all people. IDK why you would choose to add a flagellum here. Why would you make cyanobacteria be the ancestors of eukaryotes when they are eubacteria? Also, not all bicons are plants. Bicontra also include ciliates, brown algae, and malaria. Very descriptive. Not like it should be coenoflagellates instead of unicellular organisms since they were never the ancestors of animals in the first place. Oh, so you're just gonna skip right to bilaterians, I see. Also, it should be easier to shift back the animation. So in order to become more like modern fish, you start out with no jaws with Ignatha. Then you switch to placoderms with jaws, then you switch to the Ostriochkins, which are part of Agnatha since they lack jaws, and then you switch back to fish with jaws. Makes perfect sense, right? The textures on the models were pretty bad, and this moves so painfully slow that it makes it seem like Ichthyostega was the ancestor of lungfish, a far cry from reality. So, monotremes like the echidna and platypus are more basal than a cynodont, and a Cretaceous eutherian is turning into a basal Jurassic therian? So we're positing that mammalian features evolved independently in monotremes, and that these mammals traveled back in time to evolve into a species that already went extinct? Seems legit. It's tree shrews, not shrews. And at this point, the lackluster panning reaches its worst, since even before old world monkeys split off, the damn critter has already become an ape. This gets worse as you can see here. Then it just says Neanderthal. Although many humans have Neanderthal ancestry, this is due to interbreeding between Homo sapiens and Homo neanderthalensis, and not a result of modern humans being descended from Neanderthals. And for the final time, that's pretty much it. Overall, these videos are equal parts inspiring, humorous, and frustrating. The little prehistoric dioramas of right here, right now are neat, and the animation is cheesy but enjoyable. But the eerily out of whack timer and the avoidance of microbe and mammal evolution is strange. The pure kawaii force of the Del Walls Rios and Trilletta Grabber animation can hardly be understood, and the concept is my favorite out of all three, but its age means that its accuracy is frosty at best. The Tekka Insider animation is possibly the most accurate, but the poorly cropped one zoom rip off tree is definitely the biggest drawback. So with the bickering out of the way, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you again next upload.